going to Chinese food. Holy shit. Oh, this is home country for me. I've lived in China now 16 years. Um, started out in Tianjin in the north, uh, then moved to Shanghai. I've been lucky enough to uh, eat a lot of good food on the way. I don't know if I'm an expert yet because it's a super complex uh, cuisine, but I think I've, I've scratched the dumpling enough to be able to pontificate about it. So now I'm here in Bombay, heading to a place called House of Mandarin. I'm a little scared. You're going to be super judgmental about Chinese food. I'm judgmental about everything. Like my life is being a judgmental asshole. But then it's House of Mandarin. I'm hoping they can't go too wrong. Here's the issue with uh, calling a place a House of Mandarin when most of the food outside of China is Cantonese. And this week, uh, Gong Dong Hua, which is uh, Cantonese. And most food outside a few Sichuan dishes, and they always fucking up call it Sichuan, is uh, from the uh, Putonghua speaking part of the world. My issue starting off, just right out the, the gate, is um, the name. It's like an authentic Indian restaurant calling itself the House of Hindi. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I think we should get some booze first. What is that Chinese is that whiskey? Baiju. Baiju. Okay. Baiju. All right, let's see if they have some baiju. Let's, let's ask them what Chinese liquor do they have. Uh, do you have some sort of Chinese liquor? The baiju? No, no. Uh, no baiju, huajiu. Okay. Qingdao? Acai. Acai is Japanese. Japanese so, yeah. Two old mark large uh, with the thumbs up. Same. Yeah. They've got your favorite chicken coriander dumpling. What the f is that? Okay, I'm a little bit confused with the menu. What? <laughs> we are already off to an awkward start here. That emblem that you see there at a Chinese restaurant called House of Mandarin is a Japanese Tory Gate. All right, let's start ordering because I'm going to lose my shit here. It's you're starting with a giant fuck up right up top. Is this place Chinese or Japanese? I think it's a confused place right now. I think this is, is like all over the place. That entire menu is like an Asian jam party. Okay, there's a sensitivity issue that most people don't understand. Why won't you have Japanese uh, restaurants and something that calls itself an authentic Chinese restaurant? Yeah, World War II is a good answer. It's this long history of invasions, fighting and just bitching and moaning at each other. So let's get the beef and tongue style, which is the fried squid and burnt garlic. Let's get the cha chao bao, one shou mai, a chong feng. Uh, also do the cha chao, which is the roast pork. And let's start with that, and then I'll figure out some of the mains as we go. Thank you so much. Gambe? Oh yeah, okay. Hey, guys in China, and first of all, any Chinese place is super loud. You go to a quiet Chinese place, every Chinese person is gonna go, Gambe! <laughs> To that. Oh no, I needed more. Oh shit, I needed yeah, more. I think you didn't put any. I didn't put anything in there. Yeah. <laughs> I think most of the stuff that they're trying to push as heavily Chinese is fairly Cantonese. How authentic do you think it's gonna be? Just from the look of it. Fuck the taste. That's really hard to get. If I'm taking you out and you order rice, you made me look like an idiot. Because? Because uh, rice is a filler. Ah, okay. Right? It's disrespecting the guests. In other parts of the world, you finish everything on the plate. In Chinese sort of custom, you always leave a little bit just to show that I've had enough to eat. Shit, I kept ordering rice when I was in China. I didn't know this. Don't be that guy. Don't end up in a banquet or a wedding if you get invited to a Chinese wedding, if you're lucky enough to get invited. It's a little overcooked for my taste. It's like eating uh, condoms. Yeah, it just tastes like, I'm sorry, but it tastes like cotton. It's I'm like guessing shrimp. this is what you feel like when you eat coriander. So this will be pork and a big piece of shrimp on top. Hey, this is actually not bad at all. So usually you just pick this up with your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, the bow is not bad. No, 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 no. Not happening for me. Sit, put food down. Sit, put food down. Sit, put food down. That pig was 95 and it died of natural causes. It's supposed to be sweet, but it's not supposed to have this taste profile. This is like your economy here. Nothing's going to save it. Let me please command great service. Please, just get these guys. Mr. Suresh. Mr. Suresh. Mr. Roman. Mr. Thank you. Impeccable command service. Great service, yeah. yeah. 
just from the look of it, that looks pretty goddamn good. So it all comes down to how thin you make the chunk funk. The filling doesn't matter. They take the rice batter like a idli, no, no, what do you call this, in uh, your appam kind of thing, and they put it in a, in a steam basket, flatten it out, right, just thin, 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 steam it in a, and then take it out and they put different condiments and different meats in it and just roll it up like this. This is what my daughter loves for breakfast. I'm not too sure too many on the Indian palate are actually going to go for this but it, it does have a very authentic Chinese taste to it and I won't lie this taste now I'm liking it because it's been three years since I moved out of China. How long were you there? Six China? months. But I really liked this for the first month. Second month, I was like, wow, motherfucker. This, this is that exact fucking flavor. You get it stays in the of back of your head. Your nostrils fills up with this. But this is authentic as it gets. Chacha is very gross. You know that those, those pork ribs and then the side of the belly. You roast that slowly, then a little fat, a little bit of meat, and you chop that. It's got a little smokiness, sweet, uh, sour from the, the soy sauce. This, I think they've just taken slices of meat, not roasted it, just cooked it and tossed it in an oven. They tossed it on a wok and put it in there. Okay, this is a dismal failure to me. Two out of the five were really good. Because two of them had the same kind of meat, so you can't blame well, them. Well, and the covering was something like you Cover, said. The covering, yeah. That. The chong feng itself is not bad. Right. Technical skills are there for doing the chong feng. The meat skills are, you know. Let's stick with non-Cantonese, uh, but a little bit of Sichuan here and there, a little bit of other mainstay dishes that I can recognize from the menu and see how that turns out for us. Cantonese cuisine is the one that everybody thinks is Chinese cuisine. It's just a southern province. Most of the chefs that left a wealthier region from Hong Kong, they managed to get out. They got to San Francisco, New York, and other parts of the world. So obviously as these, um, as these Cantonese folks uh, settled in, they wanted a taste of home. And one would ask, what's the taste of home? So dim sum is a big part of that. Um, Hakan noodles, uh, Thiecho style uh, braised pork. Cantonese food tends to be a lot lighter. It's a play of, um, of sweet and salty, a little bit of bitter. It runs the entire gamut of uh, your taste profiles. Now, it has changed in the US. You have a lot more other provincial cuisines now expanding. But for Indians, I think they'll be most interested in the spicy ones, right? Unless you're in Arunachal Pradesh, which is very close to the border, and then Yunnan province has very similar food. We just went through the, uh, the dim sum section and decided let's not continue the dim sum section. It was sinking faster than the Titanic. So we've decided to go on the mains. Yep. We're going to get mapo tofu, which is every expatriate's favorite. Uh, not quite mine, but I want to, it's an easy way to judge a restaurant. Um, let's get some lasaji from uh, Sichuan province. And then uh, we're going to go a little bit right up to the north, actually, to Xinjiang province and get some lamb in chili oil. a lot of Kashmiri influence, or Kashmir has a lot of influence because they're all part of that Turkic Silk Road. Yes, I'm going with a lamp, which is supposed to be a Xinjiang. If it was Indian food, I'll be okay. This is not Chinese. Okay, there's no vinegar. There should be a um, nice punchy vinegar in this that gives the sour taste. The chili should be a little bit uh, smoky. Lasaji should be a mountain of red chilies like this, dried fried red chilies. And in there you have little pieces of with skin chicken. But let me give you a caveat. It's not Sichuan. It's barely Chinese, but it's not bad for what it is. Each different cuisine of China has very distinct, uh, conflicting sort of uh, flavor profiles. So when we get into that, it's, it's more descriptive, it's more nuanced. In China, actually, they give you a personal bowl of rice. Each one gets one personal bowl of rice. And I made the mistake of sticking my chopsticks in them like that. I've lived in China long enough that I can't watch this. Oh, somebody's gonna fucking shoot you. Someone pulls this out and then they told me, you don't do that, it's because when someone dies and you visit them, that's the time you do this. No, no, it's not because of that. It's because when you put this up, it looks like incense sticks that are burning at a graveyard. It's called a jaw stick. This is basmati rice, long grain rice. Rice is always short grain. That's why you, Chinese rice, you can't eat with a spoon because you, you, when you pick it up, it sticks in a little lump and you eat that. But I would say for India, 
for Indian palates that's better designed? Yes, rice is important in Chinese cuisine. You're at home, you have a bowl of rice and you take a take your chopstick, take a little bit from a meat dish and a vegetable dish, dab it over the rice, eat it, and then scoop up a little rice behind it with a chopstick, not a spoon, by the way. All right, mapo tofu. I don't know if it's authentic, it's fucking amazing. Okay. I love this motherfucker. I really liked it. <laughs> I really liked it. <laughs> I have to check your DNA if you're related to me. Somebody, hey, producer, try something. Try it's hot. Sweet egg in it, huh? Like, na? Is it sweet or not, you fucker? Egg bro. Maste rapara pe apna style To each their own. In China, you might be a little bit in trouble, but. In Gujarat, in wherever the fuck he's from. To okay. send those Chinese to India will teach them also how to eat this shit. <laughs> to close this out, this man has been convincing me to eat triple Sichuan rice with butter chicken. No, no, no. Chicken fried rice with the butter chicken. Triple chicken Sichuan fried rice by itself. Producer, please add one Chindi's restaurant. Walk leta hai, wo bamboo lakdi ka jhadu leta hai. Wo katu. Shit, I don't want to be saying this over here. This is this is this is decent Chinese food. That is not decent Chinese. That's indecent Chinese food. I have said enough. I'm done. I'm going on a fasting period after this. My Navratri has started from here. <laughs> Nine days of nothing but crying. Did you guys see the that couple that came? They looked around, they saw all the cameras, and they're like, no, no, no. Different table. You know that's not his wife. Bhabi has come. Special dinner. Nine, 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 nine. nine, nine, nine. nine. <laughs>